Welcome back. Uh, well, I'm in conversation with Manish Chokhani and uh, before the break, we were giving you some examples and uh, you know, just from example point of view, let's look at HDFC Bank, which is right now perhaps, uh, as you would call, uh, perhaps in the hated category, not given any returns for last four or five years. Uh, uh, a stock which used to trade at four times, five times price to bo uh, book, available at two times price to book. I mean, what's going on here? Uh, I mean, purely as an example, and uh, do you think uh, at some point perhaps uh, some big investor would say, okay, enough now, let's just go out and buy it? See, it happens. I remember the famous case of ITC. Mm. You know, two years ago, everyone said uh, ESG funds, tobacco, nobody can buy it. Why should they touch it? And it was languishing at 200. Mm. Today, it's 430. Uh, and it's a large cap. In fact, ITC today, you'll be shocked to know, is the same market cap as BAT, the parent. Uh, same way, a few years ago, there was the dominant narrative that Maruti has no future, small cars are over, EVs are coming. Yes. What will happen? Will the company get acquired by Toyota globally? Today, Maruti's market cap is double that of Suzuki. Suzuki, As in, Suzuki effectively has a zero market cap because it owns half of Maruti. So, these kinds of anomalies in the market do occur, mm. but when they get corrected, they get corrected so swiftly mm. that you are shocked with what has happened. Mm. And again, for context, the HDFC bank market cap was made by Apple in one day. When it rises 7% on a 2 trillion market cap, that's 140 billion. Mm. So while the numbers look very large and you say, how can any, we used to say this for Reliance, no, it's yeah. so big, it's 10% of the index, how can it go up, nobody can buy it. When it moved, it went up 4x. But then so, you, these things happen and again, I'm not making a case for any stock in particular. Absolutely, yeah. But all I'm saying is that the financial space has lagged this market because earning momentum has been elsewhere. Mm. It was a lot of correction which happened and largely the excitement was PSU banks because they went from whatever 25, 30,000 crore profit to almost 2 lakh crores. There was a time when HDFC bank was equal to the entire PSU banking space. Yeah. That was also a reality. And today, it seems to be swapping. Mm. PSU banks profits have gone up, multiples have not gone up because still the old fear is there of telephone banking. But if the narrative of PSUs is true, that they are now run efficiently, there's no more telephones coming in from Delhi or wherever. And if we can buy HAL or BEL and whatever on 40 multiples, it doesn't stand to reason that BOB, UBI, Kanara would continue to trade at one time, 1.2 time book or seven, eight, seven time multiples. So these things will change over time. But it's as an investor, you have to have patience to as I said, you buy mispriced odds. Mm. If you buy the horse, as uh, Charlie Munger used to famously say, the horse which is supposed to come first, if he comes first, you don't make any money because you're betting the odds. Yeah. But you bet on a horse number 13, who mm. comes number 8, mm. you make far more money. Yeah. And that was the narrative for mid-cap, small-cap also, mm. that they all perform better than they were expected mm. in this upswing. But the large opportunity for money-making remains in large sectors, which are large profit pool sectors. No, but uh, and that's the only argument I'm making. You know, so that's uh, my next question then. You know, it's always a battle in your head, right? Uh, uh, momentum is making you money. Right. Value is not right now. So how do you approach this market? Do you wait for that turn or do you start to position yourself right no, now I, itself? I can lighten yourself yeah, in some of the... Let me only draw back from history. So I, I don't think whenever we also buy stocks, we don't think it'll become momentum stocks. A lot of our stocks have ended up becoming momentum stocks. So, uh, and Manik Bhai, who's our founder, he used to say this very well. He's saying, you should always be a buyer of value and be a seller in momentum. So as in you buy what is hated. Like today, if I'm holding a momentum stock, I would continue holding it because there you then start looking at technicals that is it making higher rising top, higher rising bottom formation. So as long as it's higher top, higher bottom, it's fine, ride the momentum. But the day you see that break, don't try and convince yourself about the fundamentals of that. Then be merciless in selling. Mm. And that's what I mean, that if today you have bought a stock and been fortunate to participate in a, you know, 8P stock becoming a 40P stock, mm. nothing stops it being a 60P stock. Mm. It could well go there. But when it turns from 60 and it starts falling, then be merciless because, you know, eventually this will settle at a 20P. Mm. So... The speed of, like, if you are holding stocks today, and like I said, I do expect India to get into momentum territory. Mm -hmm. Don't change your horses midstream. Mm -hmm. Continue holding, because at least your cost base and what you're holding is low. Mm -hmm. So when it turns and you do sell it and you may not get the top, mm -hmm. you don't feel and don't beat yourself up that, oh my God, I sold it cheap, or I got burnt on it, or I lost money. Because if you sell something which you bought cheap here, you will end up buying something also which is expensive. And when that falls, you're going to lose a lot of capital. Mm -hmm. 
So that's all I can say on that perspective. However, as a buyer, you should always be thinking, do I have a double dip in a stock where earnings can go up as well as multiple can go up. Mm. That's the logical way to approach buying. Okay. Uh, Manish, uh, where do you stand on commodities now? Because, you know, that's one area where a lot of people are debating whether it's a yeah. super cycle, whether we are already in the middle of uh, a cycle and how do you approach stocks here? Uh, uh, because, you know, we have the example of 2000 to 2010 right. when we had this massive surge yeah. in commodities. Yeah, so it's a great question because I think in terms of cycles, mm. if you think after the world went to the Bretton Woods standard and they broke the peg to gold standard, we create a bubble every decade. And in the decades, if you look back from the 70s, it went into first the Nifty 50, mm. but it then transcended and went into commodities. And that was the famous era of Hunt Brothers who made their killing in silver. And oil went to you know crazy heights uh, and it topped out in 1980. Uh, it then translates uh, in every decade between technology or growth stocks and then uh, commodities or emerging markets. That's typically the, the changeover which happens. So you take it from commodities to EMs of Japan and Taiwan in the 80s. Mm -hmm. In the 90s, you see the climax of NASDAQ, again technology. 2000 to 2010, you again saw it back to commodities and EMs like China which led. 2010 to 2020, you'll realize India and all did nothing, China did nothing. It was back to NASDAQ and the technology shares. And because post-2008, this kind of money printing happened, they've extended the technology bull cycle. Uh, and it's an extended bull market there with excess money printing, which is going to lead to a crazy climax in the commodity complex. Which is why the bulls who are in gold, silver, uranium, think the prices are not going to be 20, 30, 40 percent up, but multiples up. Mm -hmm. That's also been explaining a bit of the rise in Bitcoin, because these are all anti-currency bets. That if currencies are getting debased, mm -hmm. and central banks, including ours, are not interested in letting us move a lot against the dollar or the euro and so on, what is the trade which can then counter for my loss of purchasing power? And that seems to be moving away to, first of all, it'll go to all these precious metals, uranium, which has great use now in what is happening in nuclear. Uh, and eventually into commodities because your cost of mining, cost of labor is all getting inflated up. So yes, commodities is, is going to give you uh, money which uh, I don't think even I can calculate today. Will it create a bit of an inflation problem then for India? It I mean, is. Uh, uh, so uh, India is creating a problem for itself by holding the currency down. So our currency, I believe, is being held down with the mistaken notion that it helps exports. It doesn't. Because the next morning you get a call from overseas from your buyer who says drop your price because, because your currency is down. Currency benefit, yeah. What you actually end up doing is importing this inflation because you're buying oil from abroad, you're buying all these commodities. Uh, so at one level, the commodity complex and banking profitability starts becoming superb in India. And then the currency, if it falls, it gives you super normal profit over here. But uh, on the other side, it makes the rest of the country, which is 95% of India, which is not exporters, poorer. Mm -hmm. So today, if a 2 lakh uh, crore dividend is given by RBI to government, it's more. Th it's a multiple of that which was effectively lost by the Indian public, who, if the currency had been stronger, would have had a bigger purchasing power uh, to buy goods and services. So we'll see how this plays out because eventually, that arsenal of 650 billion is not there to provide dividends. Mm. It's to provide stability and price stability to Indian public. Mm. Uh, and I'm hopeful that RBI will be able to, as they have, manage the inflation issue very well. Yes, so, you know, that's a topic which is very close to Manish's heart and you know, every topic <laughs> this will come out and we can have, of course, a longer conversation on that. But one last question then, you said tripling of index every 10 years, that should be your broad horizon. We're at 23,500 roughly uh, thereabout. So in 10 years, we're talking about 70,000? Yeah, you, I, look, from whichever point to point you'll take, you'll go 3 to 4x in every decade. There will be periods in between where you look point to point from the high to the low and say, this is all crap and I wish I wasn't in this market. Mm -hmm. And there'll be points you'll say from bottom to top, you'll say, wow, there's nowhere else to be. Mm -hmm. Reality is the market will give you return equal to the underlying rate of return of equity which the company makes. Earnings growth. Which by and large is 15, 20%. It can't be more than that. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's what gives you that 4x uh, in, you know, every decade. If you're lucky, you buy the best performing sectors and stocks and, you know, uh, fortunately some investors have done much better than that over time. But as an index level, if you, if you multiply your money three to four times in every decade, that's good enough. In fact, oddly, that's the return gold has given for continuous series of decades. Mm. So it's really an anti-inflation hedge again. You have to buy equities when you think there's inflation. You can't be in fixed income. Uh, and it is a young country, we should be taking risk, we should be putting a lot more money into equities as a country. 
and I'm glad that the Indian public has made enormous money in the last four years. And that is setting the stage for this economy to grow faster uh, over the coming decades. And as I said, the century does belong to our country. We are young, we are willing to work hard. Uh, and there's no reason that our progress can be halted. Absolutely. Nitin Kamath, in fact, put out the data that, you know, uh, yeah. among his clients, they've already made 50,000 crores Wonderful. and sitting on 1 lakh crores Wonderful. of uh, unclaimed Wonderful. profit. Uh, Manish Chokhani, always a pleasure yeah. talking to you. Thank you so much for joining Thanks. us. Thanks today. for inviting me. Well, that's all we have on this special edition of Market Master.